All right, guys. So let's go over the uh, the answers to the pedigree analysis worksheet as quickly as po possible. We're gonna want to know what all of these symbols are. A that is a female because it is a circle. B that is a male because it is a square. When you have not one but two lines showing breeding between a male and female, that is close relatives that are breeding. So that's ultimately like a type of incest, like two first cousins that have bred together. Now when you have half of it shaded and the other half not, these are our heterozygotes. Right, so this person is big A, little a. And when you have a branch that goes down and splits, these are our identical twins, also called monozygotic twins. Okay, so a sperm fertilizes an egg, right, N. And you know what that produces? A fertilized egg. You know what another name for a fertilized egg is? A zygote. When you have a fertilized egg and it splits through mitosis and that ends up being a baby and that ends up being a separate baby, they are going to be identical twins because they came from the exact same cell with the exact same DNA. That's a monozygotic or identical twins. Uh, fraternal twins would be like one sperm plus one egg and another egg and another sperm. So the mom released two eggs. And obviously since hundreds, if not thousands of sperm reach the egg, you got two different sperm that are fertilizing two different eggs. Ladies, you're supposed to release one egg for every menstrual cycle, but sometimes you release two. Or maybe you're on fer fertility drugs and you release three or four. That's how you get more. Okay, guys, we must ask ourselves one question. First, do we have a child who has a different expression or different trait other than their parents? Can we see that here? This child exhibits the trait and these parents do not. Is that different than the child? Yes. Now, because the parents do not have it and the child does, is that, first of all, this is, is this dominant or recessive? Recessive. Okay, now we have to figure out if it is possibly autosomal or sex linked. Is there a recessive daughter with a dominant dad? Is there a recessive? Well, let's look at the recessive daughters. Recessive daughter. Is that a dominant dad? Yeah. No, he's recessive too. Yeah. Right? We've already established that this is recessive because you cannot have two parents with the that don't have it and you have it, right? We've already established that everybody that is shaded in is recessive. Now, do we have a recessive daughter with a dominant father? So that it cannot be sex linked. Because dad has one um, um, would have to give his little a x to the daughter meaning that he himself would also have to exhibit the recessive condition and that's not the case so this is autosomal recessive all right let's look at this one do we have a condition where a child does not exhibit what both parents exhibit Juan, do we? Wake up and welcome to biology, third period at Palisades Charter High School. Do we have a condition where a child is exhibiting something than both of their parents? Yes or no? Look, not have the trait. Mom and dad do have the trait, right? So there is a condition, there's a, a, situ a situation here that we can establish. Dominance or recessive. Since both parents have it and the child does not, then it has to be what? Dominant. There is no way that this is recessive because how in the world did this person get it? So because you have a child that doesn't have it, right? They are little a, little a. Then we know that both parents are going to be heterozygous for the tra trait. This is autosomal. Dominant.
if both parents don't have it, oops, sorry. If both parents don't have it and the kid does, recessive. If both parents have it and the kid doesn't, dominant. Got it? Good. So this is telling you that the father of this son is homozygous, but it didn't tell you if it was homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. Which one is it? It has to be homozygous recessive. You're probably thinking, well, why, Mr. Vieira? Well, let's let's look at the only other way that we have. If it was homozygous dominant, that means that everybody gets a big A and ha is shaded in just like that. Is that possible? No, because of this kid with the arrow. Because this kid with the arrow doesn't have it, then that means that dad is homozygous recessive. Gave him one of the little A's, and he must have gotten the other big A from his mom. So this is the father in question is little A, little A. And the mode of inheritance is autosomal. Right. Well, it could be because you got daughter who's recessive here, right? And dad who's not dominant but we don't have any children here so it's either we can't really tell it's definitely recessive but we can't tell if it's sex linked or autosomal all right this one is just a word problem you just have to be paying attention number one the individual that we're looking at exhibits a trait so we're gonna have to shade this person in neither her husband okay so she is a female and she exhibits the trait neither her husband nor her only sibling and older brother exhibit the trait okay so her husband does not exhibit the trait she has an older sibling so it's to the left right we go oldest left to right it's a brother so it's a square and he does not exhibit, so we don't shade him in. So let's continue on. The individual in question has four children. Wow. The oldest is a boy, so it starts with a square, followed by a girl, and then identical twin girls. The Only the second child, that's this one, fails to exhibit the trait. That means... Everybody else exhibits the trait. Number four, the parents of the individual in question. Remember, guys, this is the individual right here. Okay? Neither one of the parents exhibit the trait. That is the only answer to this pedigree question. It should look exactly like that. Okay? Okay? You could have the square, this guy, square over here, right? You could have the square on the other side here. But for the most part, we typically, oops, we, we typically put the male on the left and the female on the right, so I probably had that reversed. The male should go to the left. So, that should be reversed, but that's okay. Okay. We got to figure out how this works. Number one, do we have a person who has a different expression than their parents? Yep. Both parents don't have it. So is that recessive or dominant? Recessive. If you don't understand that by now, you have a very deep <laughs> misunderstanding of how pedigrees work and how genetics works. Okay, now we look at a recessive female. Do we have a recessive female with either a dominant dad, nope, or a dominant son? Yep, it cannot be sex-linked because of that son right there. If she's... She's two little A's, right? She has to give her son at least that one little A. He would have had to have been shaded in, right? 
identify since so we know it's everybody who has shaded in is autosomal recessive so everybody is little a little a you can put that in there to make so each one of these guys have to have at least a big a right this guy has to have at least a big a uh what do, what is this person is it big a big a or big a little a has to because look they have a son who has two little a's it has to have contributed a little a from the mother and obviously the little a from the father so we know it's heterozygous um i told you in the other the attached document that this was uh autosomal recessive uh this was autosomal dominant uh cystic fibrosis also autosomal recessive and this was autosomal dominant okay so let's look at these three pedigrees and figure out what's what first of all one of these pedigrees makes no sense at all whatsoever and you got to rule it out and it's this second one right here because you have this guy right here and both of his parents don't have it, then we must assume that it's recessive, right? But if it's recessive, then how in the world did this female get it and both parents have it? How did she become the dominant phenotype when both parents are recessive? So this just, this pedigree makes no sense. Got it? So then one of these is autosomal dominant. And one of these is autosomal recessive, and we know that this has to be the autosomal recessive one because, look, both parents don't have it, and the child does. So that's for number one, right? Pedigree number one here for ocular cutaneous albinism and for cystic fibrosis, right? And then look at pedigree number three, okay? Pedigree number three, because you don't have a scenario where somebody has the condition and the parents don't, then this must be autosomal dominant. And if you plug it in, it works. So this is pedigree number three and pedigree number three. How can you tell? Because look, if you plug in little a, little a for all these, it works. It is most likely dominant. Okay? If you don't have a condition where there is a child that has something other than their parents, it is most likely going to be autosomal what? Dominant. In order for it to be an autosomal recessive condition, that means this, what had to have happened. All of these individuals would have to be little a, little a, right? And they would have had to have married into a carrier and married into a carrier here. The chances of that happening are very, very rare. Because the fact that it's a recessive condition means that it's rare in itself, right? And the fact that you had two generations that have to unluckily marry into a carrier in order to have um, you know, children with the disease, the, the chances that are very slim. It is most likely dominant, right? Can we rule it out, though, class? No, we can't rule it out. Once again, do we have a condition where we have children with the opposite of what their parents have? Do we? Right here. They do not have it, and their parents do have it, right? Is it dominant or recessive because of this scenario? It's recessive? So these everybody with it is little a, little a? It's dominant. You guys, just if you think it's recessive, give the shaded circles and squares two little a's and see if it works. That doesn't work. So we know it's dominant, right? So we know it's dominant. So see ya, see ya, autosomal dominant. How do we know it's not sex linked? Because do we have any recessive females? With dominant dads? Yeah, right here. So obviously, that's not the case. But we also have, yeah, that's, that's that in itself.
So number nine. Recessive, right? Because of this. Recessive. Now sex-linked or autosomal. Ah, so we look at the recessive females. Recessive female, recessive female, recessive female. Do any of them have a dad or son who's dominant? Yes. Yeah, right off the bat. This one, dad dominant. She has a dad who's dominant and three sons who's dominant. So obviously it is not sex-linked. So it's autosomal recessive. All right. Once again, recessive, right? It's recessive. Look at the females. Who's recessive? Females who are recessive. Do they have a father or son who is dominant? No. So for, we know that it is recessive, right? So it's not dominant. It is most likely then, guess what? Sex link. It's most likely. Does it rule it out? Nah, no. It can be both of these, but it it's probably most likely sex link. But it can be both. And you didn't have to do your extra credit.